Welcome to Recarb. Today, with the patrol, we're fitting electronics. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> In this video, we'll explain how to fit a Petronix into an existing point system in this patrol. This will work on pretty much all other points or distributors that you'll fit a Petronix to. Okay. okay, these are the tools you'll more than likely need for the installation of the points. It is a straightforward job. So first what we need to do is take the cap off to expose the points. See how bad it is under there. So how many years of neglect and use. This okay, is easy to use an 8mm ratcheting spanner Driving. or ratcheting socket should I say. Uh, as the fill blades are generally torqued on too hard. Now if you've got an aftermarket cap like we do on this particular vehicle just be aware that the screws will actually fall out whereas in the factory cap they are encapsulated what's it look like under there tom well we haven't got to the best part yet yeah is this going to be an easy one yes it is If you find that it's hard to get to the rotor screw, you can generally just click the motor around. Make sure that you do earth the ignition coil lead to the body or the chassis of the car as it will damage the coil potentially. Don't lose that one. It's a rotor. Remove the dust cap. Now you'll see expose the full body of the distributor. That is what we want to get rid of. That, that is what, is what we, we want like. Okay, busting out the Petronics. See what we get in the kit. Not much, but that's all we need. Okay, we've got our instructions. Please do read these before you install it. The Petronics system itself and a couple of miscellaneous screws and wiring bits. What do we got? That it is. Okay, just having a look at the wiring situation as we do need to wire this to the coil. Let's get some more room here. This dust cap off. Dust water cap. Okay, also brings around and we'll just follow the wiring from the original. This to be the factory nice. harness. Factory harness. Yum. It's a little bit uh, greased up, don't you think, Tom? our own wiring to the coil we're just going to disconnect this plug altogether so that means we don't need it right it does I can't see shit on this plug because of how freaking dirty it is I reckon just chop it what do you reckon I reckon just chop it I think I think we just chop it chopping it sounds quite good Now one of these is just an earth to the body of the distributor, isn't it? Well, one should be an earth to the body, as and, I always, and you'll still need to use that for the Petronics. So we can't chop the earth one? No. As long as we... You'll just need to take the Petronics out, because the earth strap between the, the points... Sorry. The earth strap between the points and the distributor needs to be there. So this one here? That's right. The one over here is one you can get rid of, because that's pointing or connected to the condenser as well. Okay, so we yeah. And we will just chop chop. Okay. 
Alright, what's next Tom? Well, what's next, we are going to remove the points altogether. Use the force Tom, use the force. Careful not to strip them. It's really not what you want to do. Okay, be careful at this stage as you do not want to drop these screws down these holes. Times. Okay. Okay, that's done. <laughs> Isn't that the best feeling when you crack that screw? Oh, it depends on how tight it is. The tight ones really hurt. Could go both ways, couldn't it? Now make sure when you're removing this that you do not damage the rubber boot that sits on the side of the distributor as you will need to reuse this. So we'll just pull this O-ring out of the way. Make sure you don't destroy this O-ring as well as you'll need to reuse this to seal the cap off from any water or any moisture. Yeah, that's pretty good. Job first first go, that's lucky. Considering I don't reckon that back advance has ever been replaced in its entire life. Well, these screws can be real awkward to get out. If you can't get the screw undone, you can just cut the wire off, it'll be fine. Look at that, hold it up like it's a fish, mate. Fish, I wouldn't call it. You fish fished that one out either. pretty well. Now remember, don't throw this away. You can still use this if the Petronics ever fails. Always best to keep it in your glove box and also in your toolbox. Okay, now off this old point set, we need to remove this rubber block as that's what we're gonna feed these wires through. That can be done with just a careful slice with a razor blade. Careful not to cut your fingers off. Leaving us with this. Leaving us with this. It does actually locate on the distributor housing itself. With this little locating bug there. It's so just a raised lip. And you can see where the O-ring goes through there, of course. So now to put it onto the Petronics. Put this onto our wires. It won't be a tight fit like it used to be. But in any case, once you put it in the distributor, it will close itself in and seal itself off. And the cap will hold it in place. Okay, we are right to basically reinstall this into the car. Cool. Yeah. Okay. You use a relatively straightforward bolt directly in replacement of the points. There and there. Don't forget the earth strap at this stage, otherwise it's not going to run at all. Okay, now it's just a matter of positioning the block in such a way that there's not too much wire, but enough on the inside. Wires does help. And there we go. Well, next time. Okay, wiring. Basically with this system, you still need to put it on the primary side of the ballast resistor as it needs to see 12 volts, not the resistor side to the coil. In this particular application, we're going to, need, going to need to make an extension harness to reach all the way to where we want to connect this up to. In other applications, that's not absolutely necessary.
now that we've got our extension harness here it's just a matter of routing the wires in such a way that they're not going to get caught on any fans and they're generally going to stay out of the way we've used just a couple of small zip ties to hold these in place Now as per the instructions, we will be going the negative of the coil and the positive or primary side of the ballast resistor. That one. Positive, negative. It's always best to check this with a multimeter just to confirm that it is the 12 volt side of the ballast. That's correct. You have to be very careful at this stage. If you do wire the coil around the other way, you will blow it up. You mean the Petronics? The Petronics, I mean. We need here are these two. So in this case, which side is the 12 volts? The one we need to connect it to is this one here. Okay. As we said earlier, just double check this with the multimeter just to confirm that you are getting 12 volts and not small, anything lower. Now being an old car, just be aware you may not exactly see 12 volts though. Check this on the coil and the markings, positive and negative in the coil, as, as we said mentioned earlier. Having a reverse polarity can damage the module. Okay, with that all done, we're ready to basically finish the install and put everything back together. Put your condom back on, Tom. Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. Stick it in the hole. At this stage, this is a good opportunity to get everything on the inside of the distributor a good clean. As usually with these sort of vehicles, you'll see a lot of rust, dirt, contamination in there. seated on correctly over the o-ring now because the rubber bush is a little bit Proud. expanded it will push up ever so slightly on this so just be careful and make sure it is aligned correctly as the Jake here was saying how's the condition of that rotor This is time to put the cap on now, Tom. Cap is going back here. Again, just be careful of that dust cover and the wires. Back home to you. Okay, we've done everything correctly. That should start up. That's what we want. Okay, 
okay. Next. At this stage, we need to check the timing of the vehicle as we have been playing with the ignition, the distributor in particular. So, timing light goes on. Yeah, what you've just seen is basically the install of the Petronix ignition system into the TB42 Patrol. You don't get much simpler than that. It is even easier than changing points and setting points. The overall install is pretty easy. You don't need that many tools. You don't need that much skill. It's literally just 20 minutes of spare time and um, never having to change points again, which I think is fantastic. That's it. Basically, we're now having the electronic. You will never have to reset the tune or your timing or anything like that. It means that you'll always get a consistent timing readout. You will basically eliminate any chance of getting uh, sudden flat spots or even just you know, burning the points out, which was quite an issue, uh, particularly for people that don't know what they're doing, or even just as simple as leaving the key turned on. Now, in this case, these Petronics, the igniter ones, you still can't leave the key turned on as you'll still burn out the module. Um, but essentially it is one less thing that you need to do basically tuning. Yeah. For the cost of the modification it really is the best value for money or bang for your buck uh, that you can put towards this car. Uh, reliability and longevity is quite crucial when you're going out in the middle of the bush uh, where there's no mechanics out there and it will cost you a fortune to go get fixed if you need to get towed uh, out of the bush. Uh, the beauty about the Petronix is that you can still put the points back in if you decide to take it and turn it into a submarine, fry the module and you go, ah oh, shit, need, need to get going again, you can still put the points back in. And that's what I believe is fantastic because there's no physical modifications that you need to do to the distributor to get it to work. I think that sums it all up. What are we doing on the next episode?